Hi, in this video, I'm going to give you an introduction to Maven, which is a dependency manager used in developing Java applications. So my name is Shad Sluter, and I'm your guide for this course called Web Development with Java Spring. So we're using Spring Boot and all of its tools to be able to create websites. So here's the index of the course playlist. So if you see anything that's interesting to you here, make sure that you subscribe so that you can catch up on videos that'll tell you how to create apps. So what we're talking about today is the Maven tool. Maven is a, is a part of the uh, development process it is used to help you compile your apps, to test them, and to deploy them. So in the next video, after this one, I'm going to actually take you through a process of using Maven. But for right now, I want to explain some of the things that it's good at and why you should care about it. So first of all, give us a definition. What is Maven? It's a dependency manager system. So what is a dependency manager? That's the next question. If you have an application that has many components that it relies on, those are called dependencies. For example, let's say you have a program that needs to display line graphs or pie charts. You would probably find a library that is already developed that will create those charts for you. You don't have to reinvent them. And so with a simple line of a dependency, your program can now access that library. So there are as many libraries as you can think of as different types of features of your app. So not only just like graphing, like I mentioned, but you could have things that will connect your app to a database or make it do logging or to have a special font or a CSS system or any kind of a feature that your app would rely on that you did not program, but you borrow from somebody else. So to make all these things happen, you need a dependency manager. And frequently with Java programming, Maven is a common tool. So here is how a dependency manager works. There is a collection of items, sort of like GitHub. It's an official source of where you can find these libraries. Your dependency manager simply is an index of what these libraries are, and it gives them each a name. So for instance, let's say we want to connect to a MySQL database. You will go and include the dependency as MySQL. In a Spring Boot program, there is going to be a file called the POM file. You can see it listed here as POM.xml. And this is the index of where you are going to uh, download your stuff. So POM stands for Project Object Model. And when you uh, look at it, it defines all of the items that are in your project. Here's what a POM file looks like. So you can see the XML format, first of all, has all these tags. It looks kind of like an HTML tag. And then you will look for the area called dependencies. So in this case, you can see that we created a project that has three dependencies. One of them is called Timeleaf. The second one is called Starter Web. And the other one is DevTools. So when you create a project, you would uh, might remember that when you create a, a Spring Boot project, you're going to make a few checkboxes that say, please include these dependencies. Well, the way that they get included is that this text file, this XML file is created. And then when you run the program and compile it, Maven, the dependency manager, automatically downloads these and includes them in the background. And you really don't have to do a lot of worrying about installation. So here is a complete POM file. Let's take a look at some of the contents of it. So at the top, you're going to see that the application ID is there, the version number, and what kind of uh, compiling you're doing. So we're using a jar file. This tells you what ver which version of Java. In this particular version, it says 1.8, which is also known as Java version 8. Then you're going to see the, the large section of the POM file is the dependencies themselves. So there are lots of different versions of a dependency, and POM is going to uh, resolve them based on the version number. So first of all, if you want to know where all these dependencies are for uh, these repositories, you go to mvnrepository.com. And if you want to see what's available, you don't have to memorize the names of each dependency. You can look for it. So for instance, this one, we have Apache Commons Logging. Uh, if you searched for the word logging, you would get research results that give you things like this. You can see that this particular dependency has several different versions. So what looks like uh, version 1.2 would be the most current version of the app. 
So if your app isn't running correctly, you may have to go back to an older version of a dependency or maybe upgrade. Uh, you would probably find that in Stack Overflow or other kinds of help forums that would give you a hint if one of these is causing a problem. So you would uh, be able to just simply copy text directly from this website and paste it into your palm file. So in this format, you can see it's got the XML listed. Notice the tabs so that the uh, top of the page uh, says that there's Maven and Gradle and others. So Maven is a popular dependency manager, but you can see the formats would be different working on some other languages. So this actually is saved in your computer. There's going to be a special folder where all these are downloaded and cached. So you don't have to install them every time when you run the app. Uh, the Maven Dependency Manager checks to see, first of all, did you download this at a previous date? And if so, it'll just use it. Now Maven also has what's called a lifecycle build event. So it's a series of phases such as cleaning your uh, project, downloading the dependencies, installing them, running tests, or even deploying your website. So Maven automates some of these processes. You can see here, these are some of the more common items in a lifecycle with Maven. So validate, compile, test, package, verify, install, and deploy are the typical things that people would be trying to do on a regular basis if you have an automated process. So that way, if you make a, a change to a piece of software, you want to do like regression testing to see if you've broken anything. And then you want to be able to uh, package it up and deploy it automatically. So there's a lot of tedious steps in uh, updating a server or uh, a remote uh, website. So Maven can help you do this very quickly. So here are some of the key terms that you would think of when you talk about a Maven build lifecycle. So clean, validate, compile, test, package, verify. These are all items that you would specify in a Maven lifecycle. Now in the next video, we're going to do a process where we're going to clean and we're also going to package. So we're going to open up Eclipse and we're going to actually create a Maven event. And so you can see that we're going to have to give it a name, tell it which workspace we're working on, set a goal, and then we're going to uh, run the program. So there's a run button at the bottom. So like I said, we'll see this in the next video. If you want to know more about Maven, uh, I certainly have only given you an introduction. Look at their official website. It's at the apache.org website. You can see a tutorial and a little description about what it does. So some of the other things that you're going to see in this course are not only about Maven, but how to build websites. So if you're interested in creating websites in Java using the Spring Boot framework, stick around and I'll help you out. My name is Shad Sluter, and I'm a professor of computer science at Grand Canyon University. And so come to class with me, and I'll help you become a software developer. Thank you.